At the southern end of Africa's Great Rift Valley lies Gorongosa National Park, a vast, unexplored wilderness devastated by civil conflict. Now, the park is joining forces with biologist Edward Wilson to create a research facility like no other, the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Laboratory. Together, they're bringing some of the brightest minds in science to Mozambique, discovering Gorongosa's secrets, nurturing the next generation of champions, and restoring this once mighty ecosystem. My name is Jen Guyton, and I am a mammalogist and large mammal ecologist. I'm particularly interested in the role that bats play in their ecosystems, especially how they help to control insect disease vectors in agricultural pests. Here in Mozambique, there are a lot of abandoned buildings like this, and they make a perfect place for bats to roost because they're dark, and there aren't any people around, and they essentially perform as a proxy for a cave. It's critical in biodiversity conservation to understand what it is that we're trying to conserve. The first step with bats is to know which species we have living in the park. So far, we've found about 20 species of bat, and I'm expecting that number to double. The best part about working with bats is that it allows me to see something that most people don't get to see. Because they're nocturnal and they fly, most people just see bats pass as shadows in the dark. I get to see them up close to study their biology. This is one of our dudes. This is a little male. I caught a couple of these orange guys last year, and I've been back here a few times this year, and this is the first one I've seen, so I'm really excited to have caught him. You can see that he's just this extremely bright, rufous orange color. It's really unusual. So the bats stay pretty cozy in these bags. It's nice and dark in there, and they really calm down once you get them inside. And keep pretty comfortable. Now we're going to take these bats back to the lab so Peter can photograph them. What we're trying to do is record our, or photograph bats in flight. Uh, so we have a little, bit, a little studio here uh, where we'll release a bat. There is actually a laser beam that goes across this box and the moment the bat crosses that laser beam, the camera takes a picture. That's the theory of it. Peter's the creative genius here. I'm essentially just the animal handler. I'm, my job is uh, making sure that the bats get in and out of the box safely, that they're not uh, hurt, that they're staying happy. Oh, wow! Look at that! That's nice! Ooh, oh, that's a good one. Nice! Nice! It's working! What we're doing here is really critical because there's not a really good database of photos of bats from Africa. In creating these photos, we're making a reference collection that other biologists can use in the future to identify their bats. So now I'll take some measurements of these guys and um, take some hair clips and blood samples and release them. We're close to where we found them and you can hear all their friends above us in the air chirping away. So uh, we're just going to release them here and they'll find their way home. This is the best part of the process. Being able to let them go again after we've uh, taken data from them is, is really nice. Go on, buddy. Small steps on a journey of a thousand miles. Each new discovery bringing Gorongosa closer to its original vibrancy and hope 
for all of the world's wild spaces along with it. <laughs>